my name is Nathan Tabor. Uh, I'm the founder of Handling Life. And what I want to talk to you about really brief, really quick is you know, how do you integrate your faith into your life? You know, your life is your personal, your uh, professional, your physical, your financial, you know, all the things that you have going on. Obviously, we're not going to have time to go into all of that. So I want to kind of hit on some, you know, high points with some very specific examples. And just so you know, I am not perfect. I've not perfected this. Um, I'm, you know, working on it, but I also know I will never perfect it, but I'm trying. And I want to encourage others to try as well. So, you know, what are we as Christians? What are we called to be? You know, once we're saved, we're, cra we're called to be Christ-like. We're called to show the love of Christ to others. We're called to share the gospel with others. We're called to love our enemies and pray for them. We're to, called to be like Jesus was. So what's the best way in this current 21st century with all the things we have going on, what's the best way to share the gospel or show love to someone? It's through an, our example, our testimony, how we live our lives, you know, to let others see Christ in us. You know, my goal and your goal should be as well as if someone sees us, hears us, interacts with us, that they say, hey, what's different about him or what's different about her? What do they have? What's making their life different than mine? So that's kind of the goal here is, you know, when you're looking at integrating your, your faith in your life is be Christ-like and be an example. Let's talk about a few of these things, how we can do that. The first is, and I think this is the most significant, is how are you supposed to apply something to your life if you don't know what you're supposed to be applying? You know, how are you supposed to know what God's word says if you're not spending time in God's word? And I don't say that to be offensive because one of the biggest struggles I have on a daily basis is spending time in God's word. You know, I, I wake up, oh, I'm going to do it first thing in the morning. And by the end of the evening, I've made 20 different excuses. I'll do it later, then I never do it. But if we're going to integrate something, we have to know what it is. And the more we integrate something, the more we develop a habit, the more it becomes second nature. Think of it like this, is, you know, driving a car. When you're driving a car, do you think about stepping on the brake? Or do you see someone's brake lights coming on and you just instinct takes over and you step on the brake? Why? Because you learned that. You, you know the knowledge. You step on the brake, your car stops. So you've taken that knowledge and applied it, which is wisdom, so you don't have a wreck. The same thing applies to getting to know God's word. The more we're in it, the more we study it, the more we know it, the more likely we are to let it be second instinct, to be our nature, to respond in that way. So really the first step in integrating faith into any part of your life is knowing what God's word says about that situation. How are you supposed to handle it? Second is really to dig in on what's holding you back. Why are you choosing not to? Do you want to know what I think the biggest problem is? You got any guesses on that? Well, before I tell you what I think the biggest problem is, you know, excuses I've used and I've heard from others. Oh, I don't have the time to do it. Uh, it's too hard. I don't want to give God control because if I give God control, I don't have control. Uh, the fear of change. You know, what if I do it this way? What are other people going to think? What are they going to say about me? Uh, the one that really, you know, was a big one in my mind and still is at times. It sounds boring. Like there's a lot of rules and regulations that go along with Christianity, right? But see, to me, the number one issue in James 3 talks about this is being double-minded. The choice. Every time something happens in our life, every time something comes in, we have a choice to respond one way or another. We have a choice to respond in the flesh, or we have a choice to respond through God's word. And 
making that decision to respond by God through God's word has to come from knowing how to respond. So let me give you three kind of specific things in this. And there's a lot of examples, but here's some th three things you can do in your work, in your life. First is become a leader. Now, not leader as in what we describe a leader today, someone who tells other people what to do, but a servant leader, someone who is stepping up like Christ did to serve others. It means that you and myself, we have to adjust our attitude. We have to uh, be positive. We have to approach things in an ethical and honest manner. We have to be sympathetic towards others. We have to be compassionate towards others. We have to be respectful to others. And here's the kicker. We have to do those things even if others aren't doing it to us. So that person who's not treating us with respect, guess what? We have to respect them. That person who's not being kind to us or that person who's not whatever you want to plug into there, from a biblical standpoint, we have to act like Christ did, turn the other cheek. There's plenty of Bible verses in that. So step up, be that leader, be that servant leader, change, make that choice to start responding in a way that God wants you to respond. Is it easy? No. There's nothing in the Bible that says being a Christian or, you know, here's your membership to a church or here's your salvation card that all of a sudden things are going to be easy. There's nowhere in there in the Bible that says that. So this is a choice. Second is, you know, pray for God's wisdom and his guidance. Don't just pray for, hey, God, you know, let me make more money in my job or, hey, let me get that promotion. But really ask and pray, you know, where does he want you to work? What type of role does he want you to be involved with? What company does he want you to be involved with? In the company you're involved with, what does he want you to do? Who does he want you to have an impact on? Who does he want you to touch? How can you be that example to others so you get into a prayer life with God and you start earnestly seeking, how can you impact the company that you're at? How can you best serve those around you? We're called to do our work unto the Lord. So whether we like our job or not, we're supposed to do it as unto God, which means we have to have a good, positive attitude about it. And the third step is, um, this is a tough one, uh, make amends with people. If you've burned someone, if you've done someone wrong, if you haven't acted the way you should, or you've been a hypocrite, or you've done something, you need to go back and make it right with that person. You don't need to put a but in there. You don't need to say, I did this, but you did that. And if you hadn't have done that, then I wouldn't have. No, that doesn't. Go make amends with them. Go to them in a humble way and say, hey, you know what? I was wrong on that. I shouldn't have done what I did that way. Basically, bury the hatchet. Work on establishing relationships with people and apologizing. Now, they might not want anything to do with you after that. That's okay. That's between them and God, right? You want your relationship with God to be where it needs to be or striving to be where it needs to be. And one of that is making amends with people. See, when this comes down to it of integrating your faith into your life, it's doing things the way God wants us to do it. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes I don't want to do that. Sometimes I look at it and I'm like, but God, you don't know what they did to me. Or God, you don't know how bad I'm hurt. Or come up with 99 other things that go through my mind. Is there any you know, excuses in Bible verses where it says, show the love of Christ to others, except if they've, or you don't have to do this if they, no, it says, show the love to them. And, and that's, sometimes that's tough. But it comes back now to the first point. The closer we are to God, the more we know about him. Things that I do today in my life and the way I react to things five years ago, totally different. 180. Totally different. Not me. Has nothing to do with me because internally sometimes I want that vengeance. I want my pound of flesh. But I know this is not how God wants me to be. And the closer I am to God, 
the more time I've spent in his word, studying his word and praying, the easier it is to make that decision. So here, let me give you some action steps, some, some kind of bold. Sometimes take a break. Some very broad steps. Take a break. Just walk away. Unplug. Disengage. Don't respond to that text message until you can respond in a good manner. Don't respond to that email. If someone comes up to you and is laying into you and just letting you have it, bite the inside of your cheek, bite your tongue. Tell them thank you so much for sharing their opinion. You'll get back to them. Do whatever you have to do to get out of that situation until you can respond in a way that doesn't cause conflict or a way that doesn't hurt your reputation. It's tough. It's hard. But if you'll start doing that, if you make that choice to do it, that Proverbs says a soft answer turns away wrath. If you'll make that choice to do it, integrating your faith into your life becomes so much easier because of the things you'll start to avoid. Find fellowship with others, not just in church, but outside of church. Wisdom and counsel from others. Three, Ecclesiastes talks about three chords, the strength in it. Ask questions of others. Find a, a mentor or a friend or an accountability partner. Um, encourage others. Listen to others. You know, this is not just about you finding help. It's about you also helping others, sharing your story, sharing what your struggles are. Hey, what works for you in this situation? Well, let me tell you, I, that similar thing happened to me, and this is how I handled it. See, the key here is, is re knowing God's word. But then looking at it from a perspective of how does it apply to your life and what you're going through. And if you're in God's word, you'll find how that applies to you. It's pretty cool things that I read 20 years ago that I come now at 46 years old and look at it, and it's a different perspective because I'm in a different place in my life. I'm going through different things. And so it's really cool about how you can uh, do that. So the benefits that you get from this is it protects your testimony. That's one of the big things that happens. All these are actually big. It protects you from unwanted and unneeded stress and anxiety because you back out of those things. It establishes parameters for your life. You get to establish the answer to your problem or your conflict or your question before it ever comes up. You get to have victory in trials and tribulations. You get to avoid the Jonah things in your life. And ultimately, you get joy. You get hope. You get, you get contentment. You get balance, and you get peace. And like I started out saying, I'm not perfect in this. But where I am in my life today and where I was five or six years ago, I avoid things. I avoid con – not all of it. But a lot of it because I choose, I'm making the choice to do it God's way. Sometimes I don't like it. Sometimes I don't want to do it that way. But I know if I do it, I'll get that benefit that God has promised me. So in the comments section, I'm going to um, – actually, I'll email out uh, some resources for you. Um, there's three of them. Uh, BibleStudyTools.com is one that I use. Um, a Hebrew Greek study Bible uh, that you can buy on Amazon or through, you know, Google it and it comes up. And then a couple of the free ebooks that I have written. If you want to learn any more about handling life or you have questions, you can visit handlinglife.org.